welcome everybody. Thank you for having me. My name is Mieszko Czyżyk, so it's a very Polish name. Um, yes, I was born in Poland. Mówię też trochę po polsku, ale mieszkam już w Holandii 30 lat, a więc mówię po polsku jak raz, dwa razy w roku. I wtedy polski język jest bardzo trudny. So I will switch back to English and uh, trust me it will be a better presentation when I do. So uh, when we have a drink afterwards we can talk Polish again. Um, I'm co-founder of GoGorilla which is a digital agency from the Netherlands and we also um, provide the core team for the Open Social project. Mm, I've been in the community for nine years. I have a background in industrial engineering, so that's uh, technical studies. But I started my career in online career doing advertising, which is I don't think it's very common in the Drupal community to be from like a more commercial background, and also heavily tied into analytics. So. Um, so first, before we start, just to get an idea of the audience, who is a developer here today in the room? Okay, about one third. One third. Uh, who is a product owner or maybe something project manager or something more similar? Okay, also a fair amount. So there are more project managers or product owners? Project manager first? Okay. And maybe some different roles, marketing maybe? One, one and a half, <laughs> two, <laughs> two marketeers. Okay, excellent. Well, it's interesting. And and um, final question. So, are we all working in agencies or maybe some different Drupal-related businesses? Who who is from an agency? Almost, uh, well, more than half, I would say. And who is from like a different Drupal or non Drupal? Who isn't from the non Drupal? One. So what does the rest do? Freelancers. I see. Okay. So maybe a better question would be so. So what what is your business model? So who bills by the hour for most of his work? One. So whoa, nobody bills by the hour. How do you bill? By the day. By the day. <laughs> Okay, but basically you do work and you get paid for the time you spend on it. Okay, and the agencies have different models. Then, uh, so who didn't raise their hand? How do you how do you earn your money? Fixed price for projects. Oh, lots of risk there. Nice. <laughs> I would argue that's even more crazy than billing by the hour. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's move on. I have a lot of slides, um, and we're going to talk about this today. So, um, first, I'm going to introduce you to Open Social. Then, I'm going to tell you a bit about why we decided to differentiate our business model from billing by the hour mostly to something different. Um, how we came about funding this whole adventure, because you'll, you'll see that it's quite expensive to change business models. Uh, I will tell, tell a bit because the talk promised you to talk about marketing of SaaS, uh, software as a service, or more specifically our Drupal distribution. So I'm going to zoom in on that a bit. Um, and then I'm going to talk if Drupal is suitable for software as a service, because one could argue it's not. Um, and then I'm going to talk, talk a bit about long term, about agency risk, uh, some things I hope you could learn from me today and um, some more ideas we have for the future. Um, so and my main goal is basically to inspire you to think about your business in a different way, maybe if you're an owner or if a project manager. Um, so so to, to rethink what you, what you might have been doing. Um, so I hope it will be uh, inspiring and interesting. Um, so, so first, uh, maybe you've heard about Open Social, maybe you haven't. Um, open Social is a Drupal 8 distribution meant to build communities in a quick and simple way. So um, if you're familiar to distributions, it's basically Drupal repackaged to provide a lot of functionalities out of the box. 
so it's not like you deploy and you have nothing like you have with a Drupal like your Drupal install and you have to set everything up. Now it provides a lot of things out of the box. Um, and before before I get into the details, I want to just to share one uh, funny fact. Um, I, I, I hope not, not many people know, but did you ever wonder where the word, word Drupal comes from? Does anybody know already? You're reading now, right? Only, only Jan knows. So the funny thing is, because I'm talking about communities, and um, actually, Drupal has been about communities right from the start. So when Dries started Drupal, he was living in a dorm, like a student uh, housing together with his friends. And they needed to, a way to communicate, so they built this message board, like a for forum type of functionality. Um, and Dries called it DORP, or at least he wanted to. Uh, which means small village in uh, in, in Dutch because uh, this is from Belgium and they speak Dutch uh, there as well. Um, but Dries apparently isn't a very good typist because he <laughs> he made Dorp into Drop. Um, and that's actually the beginning of of, of the Drupal uh, because later on, um, if well Drop wasn't really like a nice fancy word, right? So. So um, it was renamed to Drupal, which ref is actually how you pronounce drop, Drupal in, in Dutch. So, so just as a sideline, if you ha don't learn anything from me today, you'll at least, at least know where the word Drupal comes from. So, uh, so there's that. But this is just to show that the community has been, like the idea of community has been central to Drupal for a very long time, from, the, from the, even the beginning. and it's and it's uh, in the name as well. And this is a page that I didn't make this up just for today. It's actually on the Drupal Orchid page, but it's very well hidden. You can read it on an about page slash history. Um, so communities, but if you really start building communities for customers, you will see that they have quite a few problems to be effective. Um, so both from our experience and McKinsey, which is a big international consult consultancy which charges a lot of money for advice, has researched that that um, in many, many cases, social technologies such as social networks, blogging, Wikipedias, they tend to fall short because it's not deployed too well in, in the organization. So the engagement is lacking. Uh, but the good story about this, if it's used well, it has a huge impact, so it can have the impact of of using uh, big data, uh, like really significant gains for organizations. So, so it's a significant issue, and we went uh, about trying to to solve this with our Drupal distribution. Um, so actually, we say we believe there is a better way to connect your members, volunteers, employees, and customers than than currently is, exists, and that's why why we built uh, Open Social. So currently we are about uh, 1,000 active installs according to Drupal.org, and and this all started about in the middle of 2016. So um, that's uh, some time, almost two years ago, we released the PDAF version. Um, this is uh, at our office. Everybody it was happy, uh, and and we're making significant progress along the way. So this is also something I I show to when I give in, uh, pitches to investors, you know. So it's not about to brag to you, but this is going well. Um, so we have 1,000 uh, active installs. We have hundreds of thousands of registered users. Or I'm talking about we, but it's actually the project, right? It's open source. Um, we have uh, recurring revenue, which is very important to us as a business. I will talk about this a bit more. Um, and, and also as a company, we have grown last year about 25%, and almost all of this growth is through uh, our open social distribution. So, so really focusing on bringing this to market. Um, and also, you know, we're doing very interesting projects for clients like the United Nations, which are quite happy about using the solution. Um, so, so that that's that's super awesome. Uh, even Dries likes the user experience, which also makes us uh, proud. Um, but even more importantly, maybe, 
uh, the community is also using it for all kinds of of their own projects. So this is this is uh, something from our website. It's a case by a different uh, Drupal agency, so it's not built by Gold Gorilla or by our core team. And you see, if you know the distro, you, see, you will see that it looks completely different than how we designed it. So they used a different theming layer, make it made it their own, and applied it to a, a social intranet for their customers. So that's super cool. So. <coughs> Out of these uh, 1,000 1, active uh, uh, installations, I think maybe 20 or 30 are direct customers, um, and the rest is all in the wild. People using it for for their own uh, projects and and other things. So, so that's really really something special in my opinion. Um, and also, you know, what's even more interesting is that sometimes. This is me at the, the next uh, the web summit in uh, Portugal. That there are actually companies using our software to launch their own startups on top of it. Like you know, it's, it truly is a platform. It's not like just like a like a piece of software that has one use case. Um, so so this is this is you know okay this is the feel good part right. So this is great. Everybody would like to do this. <laughs> but there are some oh no there's even more good news. So. Um, so if we dream about where this could go, we would like to be on the right hand side somewhere here, like you know in the future. Uh, Aqui already somehow uh, got a spot uh, spot got a spot there. Um, this is some some work by Excel, which is a very big VC company from the US. and their story basically is, well, you probably get it right by seeing the graph. so. So, so from left to right is a timeline. So we used to go from mainframe, like localized installations, uh, to all kinds of SaaS services, and now we are like in the next phase, which they call open adoption. So, which is all often like SaaS kind of functionalities, but flexible enough to to adjust. And and these are like multi-billion dollar companies built on top of open so open source stacks, which is pretty special because those on the SaaS tend to be pretty close. Like SaaS, Salesforce is pretty close. You know, they have APIs. You know, everybody has APIs, but it's not not open code. But all of the right, on the right hand side used to be uh, uh, are mostly open source companies. Something very interesting to keep in mind. Um, so, but why did we even start this, right? So I show, showed you a bit what we are and 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 some things that 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 are going well. Um, so, as an agency, we are called Go Gorilla, and we've been around for quite a bit of time, so almost 10 years, uh, based in the Netherlands, working with some people from Ukraine, mostly developers, but also project managers, designers, marketeers, like a mix mix of people. Um, and we're 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 doing uh, we're doing great, you know, growing organically, slowly, adding a few people every year. Like a typical project, uh, I think around 2012, or maybe a bit later, run into about 50k per project. That was like an average, average project for us. Um, but we we did see quite a few of issues as as a company, and it boiled boiled down to this. So uh, we have we had almost no recurring revenue. So it was every time you had to. Do a pitch, right? Go to to a customer and win a new project, or lose a project, uh, or alternatively win two, and then you had a problem because you, then you had no team to build them both. Um, so no recurring revenue, and every way to move forward would mean hire new people. That was like the only way to to like expand your business. Um, and again, without recurring revenue, if you like lose a project for let's say two or three months, or f or maybe even longer, which can be just a matter of coincidence or chance, um, you you'll actually go uh, you you get into existential trouble with your company. You know, it's uh, because you just run out of cash. And then. So so this was look you know, and at the moment usually our clients were paying late. You know. Uh, clients tend to pay pay late, like you probably all know. Um, it was not a very good place to be, so so which w resulted in cash flow issues, um, which which meant that moving forward was difficult. 
but anyhow, we carried on and we were doing uh, okay. And at a certain moment, we had uh, Greenpeace as a customer for quite a while, and we made uh, Greenmire for them. So this was was one of our first communities we created um, back in 2011. Um, and like years later, Greenpeace is a great client. They allowed us to work on it for a couple of years and spend a lot of money. I don't I don't think many people will invest that much in their own platform. Um, anyhow, it became so good that we actually won of the won one of the more important. Dutch awards uh, for digital work in the Netherlands. It was like the Oscar for 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 web work in the Netherlands. So uh, so which is really cool, you know. We got a nice stage, and uh, uh, Jaap, who is also sitting there, is standing next to me, VP of product. He will be talking this afternoon as well. And uh, uh, some project management people, Taco, the co-founder, and the client. We had a great time. Um, but what we didn't expect is that. It gave us so much attention that people were coming to us and saying, hey, I want this platform as well, right? It works well for Greenpeace. Why can't you give it to me? And I said, well, yeah, sure, uh, you can pay us, I don't know, uh, 300,000 euros and you'll have it in six months. And, I, and they were, well, what? I, I want it like in 10 days. What are, what are you talking about? You can have it in six months. So, and, and then we started uh, thinking, so... Okay, so we have this great, great, like one-off project. Um, why, why can't we like bring it to more people, right? If it works for Greenpeace, it probably could do a lot of good uh, in other places as well. Um, and then we, yeah, that basically boiled down to the to the story that we can't scale when you when you do like one-off projects all of the time. Um, so yeah. On the one hand, we were quite successful out of attention, but we still were had, having problems. And then we we figured that this actually might be the opportunity we were looking for for a long time. Uh, so instead of thinking it as a problem, we fit. We thought, well, maybe we should take this all the way. So what we did was actually use the success of this uh, project um, to raise some money for for the company. So we actually um, did crowd equity sale so so you, you take a piece of your shares and, and you sell it to a lot of people so we sold it to 150 investors um, we sold 10 percent of the company for a bit more yeah for 200,000 euros um, and I prepared like a marketing campaign for months so I was like oh this is gonna be super hard you know okay we have a great story but uh, we'll need like two months to do this and and we sold it out in like 10 days. So, wow, everybody again, we were partying again. No, <laughs> no, but you know, this was a great, great moment for us because this gave us the funds to actually um, take this one-off project, uh, Greenwire, and rewrite it in Drupal 8, right? And, and that is what became Open Social down the line. So, so we used this money from from our uh, from this crowdfunding and from the regular Go Gorilla business to to get this going. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in between because I'm, sometimes I'm kind of like excited and carry on uh, talking. Um, so so now okay, so we built this this great thing we think Open Social. Uh, but nobody is using it, right? At the beginning, you have no no customers, no active installs. So, so where where do you go from there? Um, well, first of all, you need to figure out some kind of business model. Um, so we you have seen this many times before, right? So when you go to like a, a SaaS service, software as a service, you usually have these packages, and we we figured we will do something this uh, similar. Uh, this is the current pricing, so it starts from 400, 200 euros a month to much more custom and much more elaborate versions. Um, and and we're doing a lot of marketing for for this. So and we spend a lot of money on on selling mm, Drupal as a as a service. These are like our monthly spending on on these efforts. So we. Put a 200,000 in AdWords. We do some social stuff. Uh, we used to be at uh, all the Drupal cons. 
we even been signature partner been we are no longer signature partner but that's a different story i suppose i'm not going to talk about that um but also don't discount discount like full-time people working on on the project as well so that this is like a lot of effort um and this is how it looks like you know you write content in like articles blogs and then you pay twitter to show it to the world all right so on the right hand side you see the blue is our organic reach which we reach through our normal tweets and on the right the yellow part is what we paid for so most most of the social channels are just advertising channels by uh, by now um which is fine you know but uh, you need to keep in mind that this can get expensive so currently this is where we are so on our dot com so we have a separate website it's called getopensocial.com we have about 6000 visits a month i think um there are like one third is from uh, drupal.org one third is from organic one third is paid that's like roughly the the uh, division on traffic uh the conversion to the trial so so we have these demos which we give uh, first we just put m people right into the product like on a trial basis but we saw that they don't really onboard that well so now we are giving demos first so out of the out of, out of these 30 trials we have about five or six demos a month um which by the way if you're into marketing you will notice that's not that great so so we need need to get this conversion from trials to demos higher but yeah there's always work to be done um and this leads to about one or two customers new customers um you know so so this is already pretty amazing right you know you 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 had nothing and now you're here in like a year maybe a bit more but um if you do the numbers like in the SaaS industry you you tend to spend about four or six months of revenue on acquisition of a new customer that's like what you should aim for so so suppose that we if you look at this business model we have like the premium version is around uh, uh 500 euros so let's say we should aim on spending about two and a half half thousand euros maximum in getting a new customer so 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 that they are profitable after half a year right so that's the reasoning um behind this so if you make do this math uh, i kind of calculate that we are around 4000 now so that's that's still not good enough you know okay so so it would take almost a year before one of these customers becomes profitable for you which is still okay you, you know you, you can grow this business but after a while you run run out of this 4000 euros to bu to buy the new customer because if you are not funded very you know this 200k is long gone um if you're not funded very strongly you, you somehow you need to fund this up front this customer acquisition so so these are challenges to keep in mind if you're trying to do something similar or considering doing so something similar um but still you know i think it was been an amazing journey and this is like i just took this from last month from the website traffic was a bit lower i i saw but we we went from like a almost 90% 95% dutch oriented business in the netherlands uh, like yeah, you know an agency local agency fine to to something like this so these are trial trial request percentages over the whole world um so so it's become very international it's very different right it's it's also very exciting to suddenly be working with the UN from the uh, United States or or uh, maybe some people from India or or from France and Spain so so still maybe not there yet but yes try it it's very exciting and it will be fun so um how am I in time I need to speed it speed it up um so 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 if you look at it from a technical perspective so one of the things I was also talking about here is is Drupal even suitable to do a SaaS so yep yep uh, we'll talk about this a bit more in detail I think at two o'clock uh, in one of the his sessions uh, the short answer is yes it can be done it looks something like this I don't understand it 
but it's <laughs> it's it's doable. Um, is it a good idea? Well, I don't know. Uh, so this is a slide from Dries. I think it was like two Drupal cons ago. Yeah, I'm not not sure if you've seen it, but the short story is that there are like in the lower left corner there are like a lot of SaaS offerings right now. So they are standardized products with which do a limited amount of use cases very well. Um, so so Dries uh, calls that the richness is is a bit lower um, and. And basically, you sh that's already been done. You know, I wouldn't recommend moving Drupal in that that area. Um, Drupal still shines in the in the high richness of interactions and the big reach websites when you, for example, have multi-domain, multi-platform uh, installations. Uh, so there is op opportunity there. Um, but but I would I would suggest that, that the real question, if you're from more of a technical background. Is, is just not not to not to ask if Drupal is the right answer for your SaaS, um, but is is the SaaS is software as a service even the right answer for your product? That's probably the more uh, useful thing to ask yourself. And for in our case, um, it's not entirely yet because what we didn't think so well about. Uh, so okay, we fixed this, right? It works. Um, but we, what we didn't really think about is that how much communities use cases change from from project to project so like uh, something for the UN is completely different than from a local volunteer organization in the Netherlands um, so people like in 90% of the time they still want extras so we, we show them open social we say it's great it has 50 features you'll love it and they say well I like it but I still need these five things more, and and it goes on and on and on and forever, and um, and maybe this is something you just need to ex accept. But then you need to figure, okay, is this really a pure SaaS project product, right, or or will it be something different? This is also a customer of ours from from uh, California, also a volunteer organization, and they are actually quite happy. This is this is. What he actually said, I didn't write it this for him. So, so he was very excited that like 80% is done for him, um, and and they can focus on 20% that's left. But this does mean you need to. Uh, this is our roadmap. I, I didn't update this one. I see. But the point being is that we still like develop new features every every two three weeks based on customer feedback. So the product does get better and better over time. But people are still we are two years in, and people are still requesting new stuff. Um, but this could also be the power of using Drupal for your product, because many uh, things that are in the product now actually have been sponsored by customers. So this is an example of the UN paying for the social login, uh, and I think a translation feature that integrates into Google Translate. Just a simple example. But uh, they they had the funds. They wanted it quicker than the roadmap provided it. They paid for it and they got it. Um, so I would argue that we are somewhere moving Drupal somewhere in this space, like uh, SaaS plus. Uh, so it's like not a completely standardized uh, SaaS offering, um, but it's something different. So coming down to it, so is Drupal SaaS good for your business? Um, yeah, I would say that yes. Even though that it's not like the standardized SaaS dream, like I offer you a product, you give me money, goodbye, and everything is everything is fine. Um, I think there's opportunity in what we kind of started calling open SaaS. So it's 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 a standardized uh, SaaS offering, but it can be expanded upon. So you have custom features, flexibility of modules, APIs. And it's still much easier to market than your agency, for example. Because telling like an agency is quite difficult because you don't differentiate, right? You say, okay, we can build anything for you. But anything also means nothing, right? It's, it's basically the same if everybody says, I can build everything. There's, and there is huge market potential as well. I'm going to skip this because I see if close to 10 minutes left. 
Um, so, if if I go back to the beginning of my story, we had this slide. You know, this was actually our business problem. So, did did we solve this? Um, I would argue a bit. So, so I think including our we you know we have recurring revenue also for like service contracts and a few other things like support stuff i think we are like around 50 percent recurring revenue now which is already a huge improvement compared to zero um but especially finding this product market fit i think jan was talking about this a, a bit as well uh, i can tell you it's also very expensive next to uh, all the cultural challenges of working with marketeers and and uh, feces and what have you. So yes, we do have we have this recurring revenue, um, but we used to be profitable. And uh, for example, last year we are we are like break even. You know, this is a conscious decision because we can like we know how much we can invest in the product team and do the consultancy next to it. But it's not like from in Nirvana like right in, in two years. So so it's still it's still it's still hard and. For the business owners in the in the room, or maybe everybody like considering on on starting a business or or thinking about business, this is why this recurring revenue is important. So if you there is a link, and I will share these slides so you can get go into the details. But basically, billing by the hour or or like fixed project rates. Um, if you ever intend to sell your company uh, or get acquired or merge. It's not valued that highly because all of this, all of the skill is captured in one of projects. It's also very people dependent. People can always leave, um, and you could like expect between half or maybe in extreme situations one and a half when you're doing extremely well of the revenue being your company value. So suppose you're like have a, have a one million revenue business in consultancy, it will be valuable valued for half a million usually, right? If you have lots of recurring re revenue, and that, that's what this line in the middle is trying to tell you, I'm not, not sure if it's a great graph, but where's the shadow? It doesn't matter. The, the line in the middle, the green one, will, will tell you that in, like, on average, recurring revenue is valued at four times uh, uh, for, for the company value. So like w uh, one million recurring revenue business will be valued at four million. Um, and there are like factors which make this lower and factors that can make this higher. But even still, uh, getting this recurring revenue, which is much more stable, is very interesting in the long term. So coming down to it, oh, I've catched up on some, on some time. Good. Um, I would like to next to the, next to the first story about Drupal, I would like to give you like free takeaways. So in the beginning, I I told you that we raised some money. And we were extremely happy with it and how quickly it went. Um, we are less happy when it was gone in like one and a half year or maybe one year. So if you're planning on raising funds, um, I would recommend to immediately, immediately consider what's your next step. So, okay, you have this money, you're going to build a product, probably grow a team. Um, and plan, plan for it. What happens if it takes, you know, 50% more time? Or what happens if if it will take 100% more money or something? You know, we if we were really honest, we didn't really plan for this. You know, we made a nice, nice roadmap, we made some scenarios, and just went, right? Um, yeah, uh, you know, start considering raising immediately. Um, next, the, the question about Drupal, if it's the right choice for your product. So think about this very carefully. Am I trying to build something that's very limited in scope and standardized, or am I building something that needs to be flexible? Uh, if it needs to be flexible, like the open source idea, Drupal might be a very strong fit because there will always be demand in this, uh, especially bigger customers to like tweak it a bit. Uh, if it's standardized, it probably has been done already, and there might be other other solutions that that uh, technical solutions that are better. Uh, and the last one we I, we talked about. So, if you are a business owner or or, or a freelancer, it also is for freelancers the same story. Uh, think about innovating your business model towards something that gives sustainable value and re recurring values. Um, 
to sum things up. So, so okay, now we're here. We, we, it's going okay, but you heard from my story that we're still looking for like the next step and how to make this really sustainable for the long term. Um, we have a few ideas. Uh, I think the Drupal community is going to hear more about this one. Um, so maybe some of you have already. So it's called opencollective.com and it allows you to post projects and co-fund them with the community. So this is an example of one of our test projects. Different one is not open social. You see we have one contributor, financial contributor, which pays us uh, I think $10 a month, maybe a bit more. Um, I know that the Drupal Association is actively working on making this a tool for Drupal funding. It's already open and you could consider posting your project on it and marketing it so that you can get back. Very interesting. And finally, um, this is our like a dream we are already investigating. The communities in our case are also very suitable for, exa for example, for cryptocurrencies or, um, or tokenization. I'm not going to get into details of this yet, um, but you're uh, one of the first rooms hearing about this from us. We're also working on implementing uh, cryptocurrency into our uh, community so that people can reward each other with, with coins, which could also, as a side effect, have a very nice way of raising funds when you sell them the first time. This is called ICO. Uh, if you don't know it, Google it. It's a very, very interesting new space that emerged the last couple of, uh, couple of years. And it could be also a way forward for open source projects, which are very suitable for this model, in my opinion. So thank you. That was it for me. Um, and uh, let's hear from you with some questions. Yes. I well, we add about um, one to two standardized customers each month, which customize nothing. Um, and I think in percentages of customers, it's actually quite high. So I think it will be more than half. But if you look at the percentages of revenue, it's really low. So uh, because they only pay, or only they pay like 200 or 500 euros a month, and the cust the customers that that customize, they pay us by the hour or project base, and and this is still off. I think I don't know thirty seventy or something. So, so the if you've got a customer who requires some custom functionality mm. and you develop it for them, mm. is that functionality then rolled out to the other customers as well? Yeah. So that's a very good question. Um, yes. So we aim. We have two teams working on uh, open social. One works on the um, yeah the core product, and one works for customers. And their mission is to, the, to take the custom work back into the product, which requires designing it differently, programming it differently, and it's it's easier said than done. We've discovered. So I think around 60, 70 percent of the custom code is rolled back. We estimate it. So, so therefore, are the customers comfortable with the fact that they've paid for something which then might go to a competitor? Yeah, we, we we do see that. Yeah, exactly. So so we do see that because we work in the nonprofit sector a bit more, that's a bit easier. They're more willing to open up the work. Um, but if it's commercial organization, it might be less so. But I think more and more this open mindset is getting hold. You know, these are often they are not like competitive advantages. 
you know if you really look at it like a translation feature in your communities um, you know um, so yes but you know we try to entice them to do this right we they get the credits they are mentioned on the project page the, we take them to Drupal cons we you know we really try to make it into a partnership instead of just like a client customer uh, client supplier relationship so. Any questions? I think that's it. One more. Me again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very inquisitive. Point where you mentioned your crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. If you were to be able to go back in time, a younger version of yourself, hey, I'm Mieszko from the future, mm -hmm. and this is what you should do as soon as you finish your first around the funding to keep people engaged and, and and stuff like that. What advice would you give from your future self to your younger self? Well, first of all, raise more. So, you know, we we got 200k, which was uh, seemed like a lot of money at the time. Um, but when you're building a team that does no billable work, like no revenue at all, it's poof, it's gone. We like blew through it in like 8 months or something. So, so yeah, that's that, and probably make a more solid scenarios of what happens if we are not as fast as we think we will be. Um, yeah, I think no, it wasn't like YOLO. We'll, we'll see where where this will end up, uh, but uh, we probably should think through it even more. I, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but uh, yeah. Um, so more and plan for scenarios. Have you gone back to the original investors and asked them to give you more money? Um, no, because uh, you know that's one of the. Th this is crowdfunding, right? So there are like 150 of them. Um, so they are like not experienced investors. They probably don't really. If you're really honest, they probably don't really understand your your plan entirely. Um, I, I'm not, it, it could be a possibility. Some, some 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 companies do this, like second rounds, or maybe converted to loans or something like this. But we haven't. Um, I I think it's for us. It would be not the best of ideas. Yes. So, but again, we are looking. We we talk to traditional VCs. Uh, and they see the traction, and they are they are excited, but it's still still not enough, you know. So, like a VC usually wants to give you money when when you almost don't need it anymore. So, so really to scale, right? So, so when you're already doing well and you can take this product to the whole world, then y you can get more funds. Um, we're not there yet, which means you'll get a bad deal. Or it will be like very, yeah, bad deal. So very expensive to you as a founder, or uh, yeah, very rough terms. So we are thinking more about the open collective route, or alternatively, very new forms of crowdfunding such as crypto or something uh, something else. I think really you need to wrap up.